Once again, how are you guys are doing this morning? I know, I know it's a little tight this morning, and the room is full of people, and to God be the glory. But uh, you know, this morning has already been an exciting time, and I am super excited because we have a milk car and uh, Lydia get baptized today. That's exciting, and uh, it's always wonderful to see new men and women, especially a husband and wife, added to God's kingdom. Amen. Amen. You know, this morning, um, you know, I was feeling, this week I was feeling a little bit of a bit graceful, you know, this week. I was like, you know, man, I need to be more graceful in my thought pattern this week. And so that inspired me in this topic today, the glory of God's grace. Amen. The glory of God's grace. You know, there's not enough grace that's brought around the world today. That's that unmerited favor. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But uh, guys, uh, if you're visiting again, we are honored guests. I see we have repeat uh, guests coming out from last week. Uh, we're excited to have you again for the second time, and hopefully you will continue to be a part of our family as we worship God together. Amen. Let's go ahead and open our Bible to Matthew chapter 20. The glory of God's grace. I've got three points. Let's go ahead and start in verse 1. The Bible says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for that day and sent them into the vineyard. About nine in the morning he went out and saw the standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about noon and about three in the afternoon and did the same thing. About five in the afternoon, he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, why have you been standing here all day doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go and work in the vineyard. Let's stop there. Here the kingdom of God is being compared to a landowner who went out and hired workers for the vineyard. This landowner represents God in his gracious awareness of our needs and his continuous work to meet them. God is always looking for workers who has needs and desires to please him and glorify him. You know, what is this grace? This is one of the best illustrations of grace Amen. that we all need to have and extend to others. But somehow, because of the way the world is, everybody wants to do their own thing. Everybody wants to have their own way. People want desire for you to feel their pain instead of sympathizing with them. What is, their, what is this grace? It is God's unmerited favor to show to people who are totally undeserving of that grace. So the Bible tells us that we are not deserving of that grace. The Bible says we deserve death. But because of His grace and mercy He had bestowed upon us, we have an opportunity. Reference scripture on that is Romans 6.23. What is this grace? The dictionary defines grace as unmerited help given to people by God. It also, the merciful kindness by which God exerting His holy influence upon us, exerting His holy influence upon us, turns us into Christ. It strengthens us. It increases those who desire to be a part of Christ in faith and knowledge and affection. It kindles them to exercise the Christian ways of life. Amen. That is the incredible benefit of God's grace and mercy. Amen. The question I have for you this morning, are you a merciful person? When people hurt you, when people say bad things about you, 
when you're going through hardships in life, are you merciful? Because so you see a man here, as we will continue to read, who's super merciful to his workers. Point number one, God is eager to give you grace. God is eager to give you grace. You know, you look at verse 3. Nine in the morning, he saw these men doing nothing. Ultimately, they were lazy bumps. How many of us would hire someone that seemed useless? Probably none of us. How many of us would be so generous to allow someone to hang out on the street corner and desire them to work for you? How many of us take times we look at someone and we say to ourselves, they just need to get a life, get over it without offering a solution? You know, this landowner we are reading about could have gotten critical, negative. There is no way I'm going to hire these lazy bums. And that's just the way society is. And that is the terminology that society uses a day at times, right? Instead, as we see, and we'll continue to read, he offered them a job for that day. He, did he really need them? No, he didn't really need them. Let's continue to read in verse 8. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired, uh -oh, and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came and each received a denarius. So when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more. But each one of them also received the denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. These who were hired last worked one hour, and they said, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of work in the heat of the day. Let's stop there. Sounds like we got some attitudes going on here, huh? You got somebody who's working one hour. You got these other guys working five hours and they get the same amount of money. What is God trying to show us here? God's trying to show us that he is a gracious God, that he is a merciful God. That we're all on the same equal plane when it comes to God. You know, that's a whole different mindset than what we take on in the world today. We think that we are entitled to something, but really the Bible says we deserve death. But it's because of His grace and His mercy that's given to us. Now, I understand where these guys, I mean, if you really think about it, I understand where these guys are coming from. Look, guys, I've been working for five hours. It is super hot out here. It's like Tampa. You stand out for 30 seconds. Your whole body is drenched. I mean, it's crazy. I can imagine what's going on down there, you, you, you know, during that time. So these guys, in their minds, they feel like they are justified in what they feel and what they see because they were worked harder, they slave water, slave harder, the, the sweat from their face is drenched and poured. I'm tired and how in the world this guy has been a lazy bun for several hours. He's been in a corner. He hasn't done a thing. And so why are they getting the same amount of money that I'm getting? I don't get it. Right. See, that's the mindset of society today. You want to work hard, but you don't, you, you, you see, Jesus was a sympathizer. He sympathized the need. See, it wasn't because of a want. This God saw the need. You, you see, guys, it's according to the needs. We'll look at that. We'll talk about that a little bit more. But God doesn't grow. I mean, you, you think about it. He did not approach this situation with doubt. He extended grace. How often do you extend grace when you feel like someone has done wrong to you, has deceived you? You get a phone call from a friend, they accuse you of something you didn't do. Your first thought is, is I want to smack him. Yes. You guys ever had that thought in your mind? Yes. I want to smack him. 
Instead, let me be graceful toward him and sympathize and understand what is being said. You guys with me here? Yeah. Understand what is going on in their life that day. See, a lot of times we look on the outside of people, right? And we physically see challenges in their life. You, we see the uh, uh the challenges that are uh, 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 flaws in their characters and their lives, and we judge them by what we see. But if we take out the time and get in their life and find out what their day has been like, you know, what's been going on in their week, you know, how are they living? Are they happy? Then we find out why these things are coming out, why they're not happy, why they're so sad, or why they're frustrated or why they're short and why they're unfriendly. You find those things out when you get into people's lives. See, this landowner took it a little deeper who represents God. He saw not what's on the outside. He looked deep inside and he saw what's in the inside. And that is the very core that helps us to determine and to extend that grace because it's not on the outside. And even if, even if someone did you wrong or you've had challenges in your life, whether it's on job between you and your boss, whether it's in school between you and your professor, you know, whether it's in your marriage. Again, the Bible says, hey, look, if your brother or sister sins against you, you need to forgive them seven times 70. Amen. And uh, seven times seven. So five in the afternoon, they're still standing out there around doing diddly squat. That's absolutely nothing. They're standing outside waiting for someone to hire them. Yeah. People look, look at them and go, hey, you loser. You loser. You're standing out there. That is the way society thinks today. But God and his compassion looks totally different. Come on, He's like, you know what? I see this men out here. They're poor. They don't really make a lot of money. But I hope that I can extend this grace to them and it will inspire them to want to worship me, to worship God. See, that's who God is. And the only way that you and I will be able to find out who God is is through going to his word. Not listening to the preacher preach. Amen. And that's okay to listen to the preacher preach. But it's when you take out the time and you open the book, the Bible, and you study out for the scriptures. And maybe you don't know where to go. And so if you don't know where to go, you have to humble yourself and say, hey, you know, I need some help in this area of my life. I want to be different. I want to change. Will you take the time out? and show me and teach me the Bible. There's not a lot of humility in the world people willing to do that because it's comfortable not having to get help and people are too embarrassed to say, you know what, I am in need. But you kind of look at this landowner, he saw beyond the character of these, which we would call lazy bums or whatever you fill in the blank with, and he saw beyond it and what these men I really believe that can become. And that's what God does for us. You guys with me here? Amen. That's what God does. Why did the owner extend this grace? He, why did he give them this job? You know, why? Because he wants, God wants to see all men saved. He wants all people to come to the knowledge of him and understanding of him. The question is, do you understand God? Do you understand what his purpose and plan for your life is? I want to give you some good news. Good news is, if you don't understand it, you can find out about it today. Amen. Yeah. There's some people in here who will be more than willing and eager to sit down with you, study out the scriptures, help you to know God, fall in love with God through the scriptures, and then you will see what God is like and how he can bless your life tremendously. You guys with me here? Yeah. You understand where I'm coming from here? So this selfless landowner was amazing. He's extended this grace in his heart. And if we could all be men and women, imagine if, if someone sinned against you and your first thought is, you know what? I'm not going to look on the outside. I'm going to look at the heart here. Let's find out what's going on. Imagine what the world would be like. Yeah. Imagine the growth 
See, we just don't think that way. We don't think, you know what, I want to be an expert in extending grace. Have anybody ever thought about being an expert extending grace? Raise your hand. Not one single person. What does that say? What does that say? That says it shows us where we are when it comes to to meeting the needs of the people and consider uh, where we are and not considering others better than ourselves. You guys with me here, guys? Yeah. Philippians 2 says, consider others better than yourselves. And so that is the thing that's going to bring us all together, guys. That is the very core that's going to uh, uh, really go after and, and draw people to Jesus Extending the grace of God to people who are in need of that. Amen? Amen. You know, Romans 3.23 says, For all sin falls short of the glory of God. Guys, we're all sinners and we all need grace. You know, and uh, it's going to be incredible because uh, today, uh, you know, again, uh, it's going to be great to have Milkar and, and uh, Lydia baptized today. Amen? Yeah. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. In fact, we will not experience the peace of God and joy if we are not willing to extend grace to others. And what I mean is this. If we are embittered within ourselves and we don't extend grace to ourselves, how can we extend grace to others? You guys with me here? See, if you don't extend that grace yourself, and you're in bitter, you walk around embittered about life. And so people look at you and they go, I'm not sure if this guy is happy or this girl is happy or she's sad or what. And then everything in life is negative. It's critical. You guys with me? Yep. You get critical because your life is critical. And see, the only way to turn that around is you see the grace of God, how God loves you tremendously, yeah. and He wants you to be saved if you're not. And then the light goes off through your eyes, through your smile, and people see Jesus through you yeah. and I. You guys with me here? Yeah. So, what we got to understand is the person who was living by grace sees the vast contrast between his or her sins against God rather than the offenses against others. You got that, guys? Yeah. The person who's living by grace sees the vast contrast between his or her sins against God rather the offenses of others against him or her. See, that is the grace of God. And when you are filled with the grace of God and you are desiring to extend that, on, it is incredible. Men and women forgives others because they have so graciously been forgiven by God. Yeah, We've got to understand. This is the topic, guys, it's not really preached very often. Yeah. Because naturally we don't think about, hey, I want to extend grace. There are some ministries throughout the world that they are just, that's all they preach about. Grace, grace, grace. But they don't necessarily preach about the sins in people's lives that they need to repent and change of. And so you can't extend grace until you really know what you need to change. You see what's in, what's in yourself that you need to change. And then see that God has extended this grace and mercy to you so that you can generously give to others. Amen. You know, and back here in this culture during the day, you know, these men needed their wages. They needed their fair amount. They lived day-to-day -day existence. That's how they made their money. You know, so they looked forward to getting paid before sunset. And, um, you know, it's no difference than the day. You know, today we get paid all through the hours, but we look forward when you work hard to get paid. We need our monies, right? Yeah. But... This landowner was not only fair with his workers. As time began, as we will continue to read, he became progressively more and more generous. As these people who were sitting out in the corners doing nothing. Let's continue to read. 
Verse 13. But he answered one of them, I am not being unfair to your friend. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give one, the one who was hired last, the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want to do with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will become first and the first will become last. This landowner was like, you know what, guys? This guy may be the last guy, but I want to be fair. I want him to have what you guys have. It's not according to what they're the, uh, the want. It's according, according to the need. You guys with me here? It's according to the need. He could have, he could have paid them only what they had earned. He could have chose to pay them according to their need, not according to their work, but he paid them according to the grace, not their debt. You guys with me? Amen. How gracious are you when it comes to people that you think that does not deserve something? You know, in my life back and uh, many years ago, I had uh, eight guys trying to help me with something in my character. Can you imagine sitting in a circle? you know, with brothers. And uh, they saw some things in my character they were trying to help me with. And I could not see it. And I could kind of tell they were a little irritated. Like, why is it taking so long for this guy to get it? How many times, how many guys in this circle has to tell this guy the same thing? They showed me scriptures. They were patient with me. They, they were really slow at communicating. Because at this time, I was a young Christian. I was only about two years old as a disciple. But eight guys, and you know, it was kind of, you know, you know, me, I kind of, you know, I was during that time, I was kind of liking the attention and I loved the challenge, you know, and in my mind, you know, being a young guy, I love the challenge of eight guys trying to tell me what I think I know what's best. You, you guys with me here? And then, it, it, and then as they began to ask questions and I did not know how to really effectively answer those questions. But then I got humbled through the questions that they were asking me. Then all of a sudden, after an hour of trying to help me, I finally got it. Come on. Come on. That's awesome. But what was it? It was that they were patient. Yeah, they were incredibly graceful with me. Wow. They heard me out and listened to me look like a fool for hours. But after they listened to me and I made myself out like a fool, which I was, then they were able to reach my heart just by asking me a few questions. And then, boom, I went, wow. But it was because of the grace and mercy that they extended to me that I was able to hear them. I was able to listen to them. When I cut myself off and stopped listening to myself, then I was able to hear them out. And because of that, I'm still faithful to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Thank God. Amen. Still faithful to the Lord. But, you know, in verse 9, we see this parable focusing particularly on those workers hired at the 11th hour. If you are struggling in sin that has been challenging for you, you must simply just repent. Move on. Don't wallow in the sin. You've got to I be mean, people struggle with sin and they just wallow in it. They want people to feel their pain. They don't understand the grace and mercy that has been bestowed and given to them. See, guys, when I'm in sin and I'm ticked off at my wife for something she did or said, Every now and then that happens because that happens in marriage, right? Yeah. And vice versa, right? You know, I have to stop and go, am I being graceful with my wife right now? She has to stop and go, am I being graceful to award my husband right now? And when we acknowledge that, the tables turn. We're settled. We're calm. We love each other because we realize 
we are Christians. You know, just for a split moment, we were about to forget that we were Christians. Well, wow. you, you guys with me here? And so when that happens, we got an okay, wake up call. Then all of a sudden, all the all that Bible study and that you've done, the scriptures start going off in your head. Husbands, love your wives. Wives, be submissive to your husbands and everything. Uh, husbands, treat your wives as your own body. I mean, these these scriptures that we've learned from the very early age, they start clicking in your mind. That's why we've got to keep the scriptures on our hearts. Amen. Not up here, but here. Amen. Amen. God doesn't grow weary in giving you grace. Don't wallow in sin. Amen. Amen. Be like the graceful landlord. Third point and last point. God doesn't grumble in giving grace. So why should we? God doesn't grumble in giving grace. So why should we? You see there as we read in verses 10 and 11, you know, where the guys were grumbling because the guy in 11th hour got the same amount of money. You know, how gracious would you be towards someone who worked one hour versus someone who worked 11 hours? I probably would say that not one person in here would want to extend that grace. You would probably be ticked off. You know what? This is not fair. I'm going to find another job. I want to talk to the president of a company. I want to talk to the CEO because this is not right. This is, I mean, you'd be, you'd be ready, you'd be ready to, uh, uh, discrimination. Uh, you'd be ready to take them to court. I mean, it's just crazy, right? But see, that's not the heart of God. See, you got to realize, guys, first of all, what we don't understand, what we, what we earn, it belongs to God anyway. Yeah. It's God's money anyway, right? Yeah, that's right. So God gives and he takes away, right? And so we, we got to get that thing on straight. We got to understand, guys, that everything that we own, we think we own it, but it's, it it's belongs to God first. And when we get that understanding, guys, it, life is so much easier. These materialistic things, these things that we are proud of and, you know, the new Xbox, the new tennis shoes, the new, the new jacket, the new glasses, whether they're short, thin like mine or the big ones, the new i6 phone or whatever you call it, an i7, i8 phone, probably will be an i20 phone before it's all over. You got to have those $600 phones, but you can't even pay your bills. I mean, different things like that. You know what I'm saying, guys? It's just so ridiculous. I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm I look at these little kids, teenagers, or, or these adults, they have these $600 phones, but they can't even pay their car payment. They can't even pay their bills. I mean, you, you're, you are, uh, the grace that's been given to you, you are manipulating the grace that's given to you. Guys, we've got to change our thinking and change our mind. Amen? And start thinking like Jesus. You know, we think about this, this hired guy. In, in verse 11 here, it says, When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. You know, they received it. It's kind of like, here's your money. <laughs> he just gave you the money. Why are you grumbling? This is how you love your family. This is how you take care of your family. Why are you grumbling? Now, of course, the landowner didn't say it that way and he wasn't uptight. He's thinking in his mind, because God is very humble and he's a, he's a very patient God. He's just sitting there thinking to himself. What in the world is this guy thinking? Does he understand how merciful I am toward him? I could have easily said, no, you know what? You was a lazy bum, so I'm going to send you out. And you go somewhere else. But no, I handed you money, and you're sitting here grumbling. Guys, it's, it's like our teenagers some days. You know, our teenagers, we give them money, and the money we give them is not enough. We buy them food. Why is this portion so small? We put food on the table, just like last night, and he goes, well, my portion is very small. I'm a growing boy. I need more food. <laughs> and so these are the kind of things that parents go through. You know, well, my phone is, I have a phone. My phone is beat up and cracked. Can you still talk on it? Yes. Can you still dial the numbers? Yes. Can you still text people? Yes. Why are you bothering me? Why are you bothering me? I mean, 
mean, you go to school and you see these guys with their i6 phones and their 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 lives. They can't even pay their bills, but you want to keep up with those other school guys because you got a little Samsung phone that's small and it's cracked in the front. Wow. So you got to get a new phone because it's better clarity. You can hear it better and you can do a lot of cool things. I mean, come on, give me a break. We feed you. We clothe you. We teach you. We do everything for you. And you're a spool brat. Are you grateful for the grace that God has given you. That's what the teens are like sometimes, guys. Now, I want you to know I love my kids. My kids are flat out awesome, doing great in school, great in sports. But sometimes, because it's out front, when we spoil our kids and we give them things, you know, they've got to be grateful for what is given. Yes. Yeah. We've got to be grateful for the family of God and what God has given you. We got to be grateful for the honor that God has shows you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. And uh, it's so easy to just miss the mark when God is trying to love us, give us his very best. And sometimes we just are not grateful for those things. Amen. How often do we say to ourselves, I deserve more respect. I work harder without the sacrifice of the church, many of you would not be here, guys. God treats everyone fair according to his will, as it talks about here in verse 13 and 14. But he answered them, I did not, I'm not being unfair to you, friend. Didn't you agree to work for it in areas? Take your pay and go. See, God treat, doesn't treat us as our sins deserve. Right. And we got to treat other people the exact same way. See, in verse 16, it says, so the last will be first and the first will be last. We must decide this morning that we are going to be a servant of God and not a grumbler. Amen. We must decide this morning that we, no matter what hits us, no matter what comes at us, that we are going to extend grace and mercy. That we're not going to look what's on the outside. We're going to look what's happening in the inside. And then look what's happening in the inside. It takes time. It takes time to really be able to sit down and listen to other people, not listen to yourself like I did many years ago with eight brothers in that circle who finally Amen. tried to help me. Amen. Amen. I want you guys to repeat after me. I am saved by grace. I am saved by grace. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not for yourselves. It is the gift of God. I am sure by grace. I am sure by grace. Through whom we have gained access by faith into his grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Amen. I am secure. I, I am by I, grace. I am secure by grace. Romans 3, 24. And all are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. I am strengthened by grace. I am strengthened by grace. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. But He said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power will rest on me. Amen. Over and over. The Bible portrays God's gracious, generous gift, his blessing. We've got to be eager to give grace. Amen. Amen. Take it, accept it, and be grateful for it. Amen. Amen. You know, God doesn't grow weary in giving grace to you. Let's not be weary in giving grace to other people. Amen, church. Amen. God doesn't grumble in giving grace. So why should we? Let's just be men and women who are full of grace to God. Amen. Be the glory. Amen. Amen.